This video is sponsored by PokeTownStore.com, the best place to get yourself some TCGO code cards. They have a huge variety up on their website, including the new battle style set. So definitely check out the website and you can use the coupon code ZAPDOSTCG for 5% of your complete order. How wonderful is that? Even uh, yeah, for the stuff like uh, Reshazard codes, Mew Mew codes, Luke Metal codes, Eternus codes, Zacian codes, League Battle decks, you name it. Be sure to check out the website. It's awesome. Also, check out uh, cardmarket.com. This is a European platform that I personally use every single day. You can buy and sell uh, cards to people all across Europe, which is actually very wonderful. And you can uh, yeah, just go on the website by clicking that link, the affiliated link in the description. You're going to be helping me out a ton. Anyhow, uh, without further ado, let's just get this video started. I'm already hyped up. Hopefully, you guys are hyped as well. Peace! <laughs> What's up YouTube, it's Zapdoys TCG here and welcome back to another TCG video on my channel. On this channel you get all the latest TCG information in town, so be sure you are subscribed. Daily uploads are coming your way. And uh, today we're going to be talking about Chilling Rain, our upcoming set that's probably going to come out in June. So Chilling Rain, I do love the set logo. Look at this fantastic artwork, Chilling Rain, yeah. I think it sounds even more epic than uh, Battle Styles in my opinion because the logo is just so uh, terrific and we also are going to be getting of course the legendary bird trio in their Galarian forms. We're going to be talking about uh, a couple of cards that we already seen uh, from of course the uh, Japanese counterpart, the Matchless Fighters and there's also uh, the other set uh, Silver Lands and uh, we're going to be seeing which cards we're uh, probably going to be getting in Chilling Rain. I think all of them will of course be in this new set but that's not confirmed. Sometimes people, actually uh, the Pokemon company just cut out specific cards to just uh, make promo boxes up or just release in future sets. As you can see, the next English TCG set will be named Chilling Rain. It will be released on uh, June 18th. So uh, as to be uh, predicted here uh, in June, we're going to be getting this set. So it's very strange because in the past, uh, TCG sets actually came out like on February, on May and on August. Uh, this is very different. We'll see how uh, this impacts the format uh, whatsoever i do love the fact that we're getting another set so we already got like shining fates we got uh, battle styles and now chilling rain also are, are, are around the horizon here that's uh, not uh, june is actually not far away that's only three months time so lots of pokemon coming your way i think that's uh, because of the 25th 25th anniversary of pokemon and not only that uh, there is of course the global pandemic happening so i don't think uh, yeah pokemon is uh, sitting down slowing down anytime soon it's gonna be awesome so as you can see here the set should be comprised of cards from uh, s S5A Matchless Fighters and S, uh, S6 Silver Lance Jet Black Spirit. So the name come from uh, the fact that the last two sets feature Ice Rider uh, Calyrex and uh, the Shadow Rider Calyrex. So it's got some sort of a uh, fusion going around because of course in the video games you had that DLC and uh, combining Pokemon. I think the V Union will most likely be introduced in this set or the other set afterwards. There is no way they are not going to be introducing that because it's something that they registered. Like V Union is a trademark and typically those are used for something like collection box. So we've seen that Pokemon uh, trademark GX in the past and then uh, GX just came around as a mechanic. Same goes for VMAX Pokemon. So V Union, so what are those? We're going to have to figure that out very shortly. The good news is in Chilling Rain, there's going to be more uh, uh, single strike and rapid strike cards as well. So that's going to be awesome. And they're also going to be printing more uh, yeah, boxes because of the shortage. Uh, yeah, the, the factories are going full full focus. So everybody can have, of course, their uh, yeah product. Uh, next, we're going to be talking about the Matchless Fighter, the Japanese counterpart. This is a S5A. And uh, this is already uh, revealed and going to come out on March 19. So next week in Japan, they already get this set. We're going to be uh, taking a sneak peek at our Chilling Rain set because most of these cards, if not all of them, will be included in the uh, Chilling Rain set. So uh, first of all, we have a Beedrill. Look at this artwork. It is a single strike Pokemon. And uh, we already talked about this card in a, a little bit because it got revealed uh, very early on. And this guy is interesting because if your opponent's active Pokemon has any special energy attached to it, bam, automatically knocked out. And we can get this uh, up and rolling with, of course, the uh, Mustard single strike stance. You can get this out of the deck instantly if it's the only card. We can just come out of nowhere with this. So if uh, decks run on special energies, think about speed lighting energy, think about rapid strike energy, think about single strike energy, think about capture energy, think about hiding dark energy, all of those see play. So Beedrill can come out of nowhere. Uh, it's very clunky to get it out because of uh, the um, 
a way that we don't have a way to search out a single supporter like we had with Tapu Lele GX or Jirachi GX before it. That's uh, something we need actually. We need that one attack ability to of course get a, a supporter from deck to just get one copy of Beedrill in your deck, one copy of, of Mustard in your deck. That's gonna help out but for now it's pretty clunky to get Mustard in the hand where you specifically need it. So it, in, in uh, the future, I think it has potential also for one energy, 110 damage is not too bad. Uh, hitting for grass weakness, evolving V Pokemon like Colossal, you can smack that for weakness and KO it. So that's interesting for sure. Moving forward, we got ourselves uh, a cool looking Heracross, also single strike grass uh, Pokemon. So you can uh, single strike, smack for 40 damage and uh, flip two coins. If both of them are heads, you slap 160 damage more, but that's pretty, uh, yeah, Crazy to just get that. You can play Glimwood Tangle, not only that, Glimwood Tangle can be uh, stopped by Cod as well. And uh, flipping two heads uh, is very hard, that's for sure. That's only 25% chance of landing that. Moving forward, we have ourselves Blaziken. We talked about this in depth before. This is gonna help your type coverage quite well in your Rapid Strike deck. Rapid Strike uh, decks can, of course, use Blaziken V or the Blaziken V Max here. Look at the artworks there, they are stunning. And this is able to actually, with that second attack, for a single Rapid Strike energy, slap 130 damage and attach an energy from your discard pile up to two of your bench Rapid Strike Pokemon. So it's like uh, the uh, Flare Starter, and it's not Flare Starter, but the attack Power Heater or something, a Heater Accelerator, something like that. The Volcanion from Steam Siege, we remember that. Slapping damage, accelerating to bench Pokemon. This is gonna be great. You hit for weakness, you one hit KO Zation, and you can accelerate on the bench. It's a, maybe a 1-1 one, one line worthy of a Rapid Strike deck uh, just because of its typing and uh, the way you can accelerate some energies to uh, slap some more damage later on in the game. Like for instance, a Rapid Strike Urshifu V Max. There is a Volcarona pretty me mediocre. It's crazy that this guy slaps 170 and it's still mediocre for stage one with Welder. Yeah, the format has power creeped quite a little bit, won't you say? Uh, there's a Tentacruel, uh, not too interesting. I'm only gonna talk about the interesting cards that we have to like uh, hype up for. Uh, yeah, for a uh, twin energy, you can. Uh, <laughs> this is a very uh, crazy attack. Uh, the delivery here. Return this Pokemon all cards, uh, attach it to your deck, and then search your deck for any card and put it in your hand. And then they <laughs> reset stamp or Marnie you, and you cry in a corner. That's how it happens sometimes. There is a, a Sharpedo, not too good. Some more. Uh, this is interesting. I do love this Subble. Search your deck for up to three Rapid Strike basic Pokemon, put them on your bench. This is actually not bad. Uh, if you're playing a Rapid Strike deck, you can go for this attack on the first turn of the game. If you go second, just attach any energy. It's for Carlos energies. And then out of nowhere, you can get yourself a, a Remorade, uh, a Rapid Strike Urshifu V, and then maybe something else you want. So that's gonna be very interesting. Not only that, we still have the Drezile and uh, the uh, Inteleon from Sword and Shield, which searches out trainer cards. That's gonna be very helpful for sure. Rapid Strike, I'm a, a big fan of the Sobble, to be honest, uh, but yeah, eventually you can go into uh, the uh, Inteleon here. And this is actually like uh, Feather Arrow. Feather Arrow is back. Remember the Sun and Moon days of the Sigiwai GX. And uh, this time around, uh, it's on a, a one price stage two Pokemon. Once during your turn, you may place two damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon. We've seen in the past that it was good. But the problem with this is that uh, in, the, in the past, we were playing a format with evolving uh, Pokemon. So like Zorua, we were playing uh, Inkei. So we had evolving Pokemon with low amount of HP. Now our evolving Pokemon are 220 HP V Pokemon. So yeah, I don't know if Inteleon might see its way. I think it's personally better. If you want to use it for the damage count, it's probably better to play four Scoop Up Net and Galarian Zigzagoon because getting out this guy is a lot of work. And uh, maybe an entire deck on your own because we do have the Drizzile. Could be interesting. So if you get three of them out, you slap 60 uh, Snipe, whatever you want. And uh, that could be pretty interesting. But the problem is even with 150 HP, you go down instantly. So I don't know how to feel about Inteleon. It's, it's too mediocre in my opinion. We have... Uh, Rapid Strike Urshifu V as a one price Pokemon. It evolves from, of course, that Kupfu. I haven't seen any Kupfus just yet. Uh, maybe it's probably also going to be in the set, uh, mark my words. But this is able to slap 30 damage for each of your Rapid Strike Pokemon in play. If you can't ca count that correctly, you can slap 180 damage for a single uh, Rapid Strike energy. Rapid Strike energy, boom, uh, 180. That's not too bad. That's definitely not too bad. We have ourselves a lantern. Uh, yeah, that's not good. <laughs> we have Tundra. So the uh, yeah, weather trio is also coming. 
uh, you may attach lightning damage from your hand to one of your bench Pokemon. Okay, this is good. Remember Oblivion Wing, Evelta, XY days I'm talking about. So you can slap 30 damage and accel accelerate the lightning energy from your hand to one of your bench Pokemon. Instead of the discard pile, it has to come from your hand. But we do have still Viridian Forest, we have Energy Spinner, so you can search those out. You can even go for a heavy uh, Crobat and stuff, drawing a lot of cards until you have that lightning energy. And accelerating lightning energies is good. This is gonna work out with Bolton, Picaram, um could be interesting as a one price attacker because it does slap 130 damage so it could be having a way to just smack Altarias in the face as well so interesting uh, one price lightning Pokemon for sure we have uh, Dracozolt V this is probably one of my favorite artworks I've seen <laughs> so happy okay this guy is able to use a rumble break 30 damage during your opponent's next turn your opponent can't attach energies from their hand to their defending Pokemon. Okay, uh, if they could switch around to uh, reset the attack effect, but yeah, if you just pair that with a reset stamp and play hammers, at one point the attacking Pokemon in the active slot will not be able to attack. So that could be pretty interesting for sure. You also slap damage, so uh, energy denial uh, is pretty interesting. We've seen that working out before. Maybe you can play some, so maybe you could see its way in a stall deck, but I don't know. Uh, the opponents not able to attach energies on their active, they might switch out of it. So if they are running out of switches and they're stuck in the active and they cannot attach on their active, that could be pretty interesting for sure. Also slap them 180, but you have to discard the top three cards from your deck. Then we have, of course, the Dracozolt V Max. I'm a little bit scared of the fighting weakness, uh, to be honest, because uh, I know Galarian Zapdos V is coming, and that's gonna slap everything that is weak to fighting for huge weakness. Think about Eternity, think about Crobat, think about whatever is gonna go down. And this guy is gonna get caught in the crossfire. Also, Urshifu V Max slaps this for weakness, which is not too good. But this has an attack very similar to Shell Trap of the Turtonator uh, back in uh, Guardians Rising. Uh, we're going way back here, Sun and Moon days. Uh, this guy is able to slap 60 damage with Trap Spark during your opponent's next turn if this Pokemon is damaged by an attack, even if it's knocked out, with 12 damage counters on the attacking Pokemon. Very similar to the uh, Galarian Stunfisk V as well. So, uh, yeah, people typically don't attack but 60 base damage is not too bad you slap 60 and then if they attack you 12 damage counters and that for one single energy you could be pairing this with uh, Cheryl so you attach attack they, you get damaged you Cheryl you attach again so I do see this working out it's it's a pretty interesting attack for sure and uh, you as long as the opponent is not playing fighting types yeah, fighting type is keeping it down, to be honest. Next is Galarian Articuno V. Majestically looking around like here with a Psychic Construct. Very similar to uh, other uh, Instruct uh, abilities. This is going to allow you to draw cards. Once during your turn, you may discard two cards from your hand. If you do, draw one card. This works from the bench, so it's obviously better. I think we had an Audino, which actually allowed you to draw one card if it's in the active slot. This one allows you to discard two cards from hand, which sometimes can be crucial. Think about Mew Mew decks wanting to have those attackers in the discard pile. Think about Pokemon wanting this energies in their discard pile so they can accelerate them. Yeah, this could be seen play. You can have that extra draw power. So imagine this, you have Baby Blacephalon. You can draw with Orcorio. You can draw with the Dene, you can draw with Crobat, you can draw with Cricketune, and you can draw with Galarian Articuno V. Yeah, I, this is another option to those two prize bench sitters that allows you to draw cards. Its attack is mediocre, but I do love its ability. Might definitely see some play because drawing cards in the TCG has always been good. And I also see you can also stack this ability if I'm not mistaken because it doesn't stay. You cannot use it more than once. So imagine you have yourself three Galarian Articuno Vs up on your field. You can actually uh, allow you to draw three cards. You have to discard a lot of uh, stuff from the hand, but with research, you do that anyhow. With the Dene, you do that anyhow. So digging for cards, maybe a heavy amount of Galarian Articuno V. We have to try that out for sure on the channel when it comes out in Chilling Rain in June. Next is a Swoobat. Uh, if you have the same number of cards in your hand than your opponent, you actually slap 110 for one energy. Again, 110 doesn't cut the deal just yet because of the power creep. VMAX is having 340 HP. Yeah, and it's also a stage one. Uh, we also have a slurp up. Remember the Seismito slurp of days. Wow, I'm getting so much nostalgia here. Uh, flip three coins for every head. Surge a card from your discard pile. Show it to your opponent and put it in your hand. Woof! Is this the new face of control? <laughs> this twin energy glim with tangle and go and just crushing hammer. Steam yell grunt. Uh, do it again. Go to the hand. The problem is they go to the hand because. Yeah, it doesn't matter too much because with the Ranguru they went to the bottom of the deck. This it goes to the hand. Woof! Yeah. 
You control players. I'm looking at you, I Caterpie. I'm looking at you, Sander Warjack. <laughs> play this card. You're gonna love it. Three cards is good. As you play Glenwood Tangle, that's an average of like two. I guess that's not too bad, right? Two cards back from uh, the discard. We've also seen that Excadrill did see some play Excadrill control. So this actually goes to the hand. You do need twin energy, but still with triple accelerated energy and twin energy by your side, and you are able to get back the triple accelerated energy from the discard pile with this attack. Interesting, that's for sure. We have ourselves a Hatterene. Uh, once during your turn, you may switch this active, uh, yeah, your active Pokemon with one of your bench Pokemon, then have your opponent switch their active Pokemon. Okay. Sort of like escape rope, but you go first, so that's not too bad. <laughs> that's actually, I think it's more terrible than escape rope. Escape rope is going to be very good as an item card. Once during your turn, you may switch your active Pokemon. When you always have switch outs, that's good, but your opponent also has a switch outs, and you go first, so that's not too good. Your opponent will already know what you're up to. We have ourselves Duck Trio. Trio, Trio. Here he is, the, the Duck Trio. Uh, flip three coins. 60 damage times the number of heads. If you get three heads, you one shot Eternus. But this guy, yeah, he can do it for a, a, a rapid strike energy. So one attachment and you go. And uh, also, if three of them are heads, you actually are immune from damage during the opponent's next turn. Interesting stage one for sure. <laughs> I don't know if it's gonna be seeing any play because flipping coins and having all of them be heads in order to just be quite viable is not the way to go in my opinion. This Galarian Surfetch, if it has a tool card, you slap 160. Mm, yeah, 160 and it isn't affected by resistance as well. But it does need three energies. You do have Handum to set it up, so you go over to 160 with some single strikes that could easily go to 180, 200. Able to two-shot Pokemon. Glarian Surfetch, it's uh, yeah, an interesting card for sure. Next, the best card of the new set is Galarian Zardos V. I'm already saying that, I'm uh, not biased or anything. <laughs> this is going to have the ability Fighting Instinct. And uh, for each Pokemon V your opponent has in play, the attack cost is one carless energy less for this Pokemon. So if the opponent has an Eldegos, a Crobat, or a Zacian in play, boom, you can attack for one single energy. That's crazy, right? You can uh, go for stuff like Aurora Energy, you can attach of the turn and just go crazy. And also, this attack is very good. Before doing any damage, discard a special energy from your opponent's active Pokemon before you do damage. That's crazy. If people want to be playing Weak Guard Energy to protect their fighting weak Pokemon, irrelevant. Zapdos just slaps through it and gets, of course, those uh, yeah, multiple prize Pokemon. 170 damage is also not too bad. You. Uh, Two shot most, actually you two shot any VMAX in town and you also hit for weakness against some popular archetypes. That's very, very good. Galarian Zapdos, big fan, big fan. Because let's face it, uh, Picaron players always rely on Bolton. That's a V Pokemon. They also rely on Crobat. That's a V Pokemon. Sometimes they uh, <laughs> they go for crazy the Dene, so you can also like have yourself something else going around. But as soon as they overbench with V Pokemon, they're done for. And also two energies is not too bad either way. You can just attach to the Zapdos and see if the opponent wants to be playing uh, any other V Pokemon to draw cards with. What else do we see here is a Gigalit, uh, which is not good. <laughs> what else? It's uh, Galarian Renegras. Uh, look at this guy. Look at that artwork. Probably gonna be a fancy hollow for sure. If this Pokemon is in the active slot and is damaged by an attack from your opponent's uh, Pokemon V Max, Put damage counters on the attack equal. Ooh, it's like a mirror. Yo, mirror wall, that's crazy. If, uh, let's say, uh, a big attacking, like Eternus, they want to attack you. They slap for 240. Uh, oh, it's a VMAX, they attack you. You can put the uh, damage counters on the attack epoch equal to the damage done to this Pokemon. So even if they like hit for weakness or something, not they're gonna do that, but still, you can put the equal amount of damage counters on them. So, and that's with an ability, you don't even attack. So it's an anti VMAX uh, card. Very interesting for sure. We have Passimian back in the format, this time uh, joining the Rapid Strike camp. And uh, all of your Rapid Strike Pokemon do 30 more damage to your opponent's benched V and GX. What? All of your Rapid Strike Pokemon's attack do 30 more damage to your opponent's benched V and GX. You can't use more than one coach, trainer coach during a time. Oof. Insane! This is a busted card! This is gonna be crazy. Imagine Rapid Strike Urshifu is already slapping 120 damage to two targets with this. If you're attacking V and GX Pokemon, that's 150. Add in Telescopic Sight and a lot of two price bench sitters go down instantly. This is a very insane card. Mark my words. It's very, 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 very good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not over exaggerating. That card is insane. Oh, here is our little Kafu. 
not doing anything. You can uh, search your deck for a basic energy and attach it to this Pokemon and then your opponent knocks you out and you're gonna be crying in the corner. <laughs> no. Galarian Moltres V, probably one of the, yeah, fancier artworks out there. Once during your turn, you may attach a Darkness Energy from your discard pile to this Pokemon. You can't use more than one uh, Blastered Wings ability per turn. Okay. A limited to one, but you can uh, absorb some Darkness Energies. Is that gonna be uh, some sort of a dark box with energy switch? You can uh, mark my words, this is gonna be interesting. Also 190 for two energies is not too bad because it accelerates very quickly. Galarian Moltres V also has potential. We talked about Galarian Slowbro V uh, getting caught in the crossfire with the fighting type weakness. This is an interesting card. You can discard a card from hand to draw three cards with mixing discard. It's first attack, it's second attack. The defending Pokemon is knocked out uh, at the end of your opponent's next turn. So it's basically like uh, Dosnor and Trevenant, but the opponent can switch out of it. They have Now we have Bird Keeper, Malolana, Switch, Escape Rope, oh, uh, Air Balloon, U-Turn uh, Board. So many switch outs that I don't think this attack is good. Could be paired pretty well with um, stuff like Reset Stamp. You can also accelerate energy with Hondoom onto it because it's a single strike Pokemon. So you need reset stamp for sure, otherwise it's never gonna work. Or maybe item lock so they cannot switch. Maybe that's the key to do this. Hondoom, Amastar, Sangalarian, Slowbro, Slowking V. Now we have the VMAX. Uh, your opponent's active Pokemon is now poisoned. During the checkup phase, put 12 damage counters instead of one on the uh, defending Pokemon. So with Toxicroak, you have 140. 140 poison, and then it's back to your turn. 140, that's two shotting tag teams with just poison alone. Poison party it is. We have a Saviper. This is a, a card that I think is very good. If you play a single strike supporter from your hand during your turn, aka you play, uh, there was a couple of them in there. You can use Bruno, you can use the other one. I think uh, I'm just gonna have to scroll a little bit to see which one it was. Uh, yeah, Karen's Conviction to slap even more damage. This Saviper is going to be able to dish out a huge amount of damage already. Like let's say you slap a, a single strike supporter from your hand, bam, 180. You can uh, have a single strike uh, energies on here with Handum. So let's say you have three of them on, let's just go crazy. You have one in hand, you accelerate two with Handum. At one point, you're dishing out 60 additional damage and you're playing uh, Karen's Conviction uh, at the late game and that's gonna allow you to dish out 20 more damage for every prize card the opponent has taken, which is uh, totally insane. This Viper is gonna be able to uh, sometimes one-hit KO a lot of Pokemon. <laughs> love it, I love it. It's also hidden for Darkness Weakness, so if you want to have yourself a better matchup against Dragapult, Rapid Strike, Urshifu, uh, this could be the way out. We have a Spirit Tomb. This is basically the Mad Party nail in the coffin. Oh no, I'm having trouble against Mad Party. Just one card that only needs a Carlos energy will allow you to win that game automatically. Count the number of Pokemon cards in your opponent's discard pile. So, uh, Galarian, Mr. Rhyme, the Dene, uh, Poltegeist, Bunnelby. Put that many damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon in any way that you like. Then your opponent shuffles all the Pokemon from their discard pile into their deck. Not only are you bringing Mad Party back to a zero damage output, you also slap, let's say, typically they have 10 Mad Parties in there, so they slap 200. That means you can spread 10 damage counters, which means in the crossfire, you most likely will get two of these uh, Mad Parties back in the discard pile while reducing the damage output to zero. It's insane. So Mad Party, 40 HP, uh, Poltegeist, 60 HP. It's crazy. This spirit too, man. The Spirit Room really lo loves to just smack uh, Mad Party in the face, that's for sure. We have a Scullipede, which never sees play because Pokemon doesn't like this Pokemon, apparently. <laughs> never sees love, never sees love. We have a Scrafty, also never sees love. Uh, we have a Single Strike Urshifu, so evolves from the Cup Fu as well. And this is a Single Strike Party. If this Pokemon has any damage counters on it, which you can definitely make sure you do that thanks to the Handooms, you slap 200. With three Single Strike, that's 260 damage. 260 for one prize Pokemon. <laughs> I'm afraid to say it. This is good. You can actually go for like uh, bench hitters as well. You don't always need the damage counters. Oh, this is a, an interesting card. One price single strike uh, Urshifu with a 4 of 4 Handum line. Could be interesting. You two shot V maxes as well. The problem is you also need a, a whole heap of Handum. So this is actually not a bad card. I like it. And also you can resort to like that uh, scroll of Scorm to just slap more damage depending on how many damage counters you have on you. Zangus, Rapid uh, Strike. If you have played a Rapid Strike supporter from your hand during your turn, this attack uh, also does 50 damage to two of your opponent's bench Pokemon. Remember Persimian? Ha ha ha! That's 80 to two of your opponent's bench Pokemon. Jirachi, Galar, and Zigzagoon. They are automatically exploded in your face. <laughs> this could be working out. And uh, you can use that for 
uh, a single uh, a rapid strike energy and then another att attach of turn so it does need two attachments to get going but oh boy it could be very huge and also now that i think about it you can use that uh, squirm attack to spread damage across the opponent's field 30 on everything and then also rely on uh, the Passimian to slap more so it's gonna be crazy those spread archetypes so rapid strike does love uh, spread for sure we have a shaman with sky return something like it uh, we have the return 10 damage you may draw cards until you have six cards in hand and then return this Pokemon and all cards into your hand with Sky Return. So it's like Shaman EX, but the downgraded version, and nobody's gonna use it because uh, using an attack to draw cards is useless with Marnie in the format. What else do we have? We have Her Gear, uh, not good. There's also Stoutland. As long as this Pokemon is in the active spot, uh, your opponent's active Pokemon do 30 less damage. Okay, your opponent's active Pokemon do 30 less damage. So this is like buffing up your defense. Not gonna be seeing play because it's a stage two. We have ourselves Braviary, never sees love, unfortunately. Not a good card. And now we have come to the items and supporter section. We have the Welcoming Lantern. Uh, choose a single strike supporter from your discard pile and put it in your hand. So basically like VS Seeker for uh, single strike supporters. If you're playing a single strike deck, that's pretty nice because that means your Karen's Conviction, which we're gonna talk about later, actually becomes multiple Karen's Convictions uh, during the game. That's pretty nice. We have the Echoing Horn. Put a basic Pokemon from your opponent's discard pile into their bench. This is like the horn! That ADP is gonna slap your Dedania and Crobat in the face because typically against those matches, you don't wanna have your two prize Pokemon set on the bench. But now with this, ADP gets even more bonkers. Play one copy of that in ADP, you're gonna love it for sure. We have uh, also against spread archetypes, could be nice to just have the opponent slap down stuff on their bench. We have a Galarian Breastplate, uh, making sure that Pokemon with Galarian in their name take 30 less damage. Think about Galarian Obstagoon, Galarian Surfetch, Galarian Stunfisk V. There's a lot of ways you can be uh, buffing up your Galarian Pokemon now with this Breastplate. And then there's Karen's Conviction. I think this card is uh, utterly broken. During this turn, your single strike Pokemon attacks do 20 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon for every prize card the opponent has already taken. Let's just go in the late game. Opponent has taken four prize cards. They knocked out your Jirachi, they knocked out uh, your VMAX, whatever. It doesn't matter. They have taken four prize cards. That means you slap 80 more damage during that turn. And I don't know if you've noticed, but single strike Pokemon dish out more damage anyhow. With the single strike energy, they are actually going to be able to hit crazy numbers. Like imagine you have two single strike energies on you. You play that Karen's Conviction during that time when the opponent played four, has taken four prize cards. And that means you automatically have yourself uh, 100 more damage output. Or <laughs> It's going to be crazy. Or even more. Uh, that can help out uh, to just hit the numbers you want. So very nice late game card. You cannot draw cards with it, but we do have a lot of draw Pokemon. We have uh, stuff like Dedane. We have stuff like Crobat. So we don't have to worry about the draw aspect in the trading card game right now. We have Clara. Haven't seen this card before. Uh, choose up to two Pokemon and up to two basic energy from your discard pile. Show them to your opponent and put them in your hand. So it's basically like the better version of Nessa because this works for any deck. Yeah, Nessa is better for water types, I know, but this is going to be great for any type of deck that wants to recover Pokemon and basic energies from the discard pile. Recover card. I don't know if it's going to be seeing that much play because I think uh, we still have access to Ordinary Rod, which shuffles to the deck, so... And that's an item card. You don't want to waste your supporter on that unless you have something like uh, two basic energies. Yeah, I don't know. Then we have uh, Ivory. This is going to be the one from the DLC, welcoming you to the uh, other part of the Galarian region. Uh, draw three cards. It's basically like hop and then your opponents discards their bench Pokemon until they have three bench Pokemon remaining. Another Eternatus counter. You play this, Eternatus goes from eight bench Pokemon floop, to three bench Pokemon and uh, at one point Eternatus will not be able to one hit KO anymore. And you draw three cards. That's, that's pretty interesting for sure. We have Brawly. This is like a card I wouldn't use because of the first turn supporter rule. Brawly is, uh, or actually Brawly, I don't know how you pronounce it. Brawly, <laughs> Brawly, Brawly, whatever. Uh, search your deck for up to three Rapid Strike basic Pokemon, put them onto your bench, then shuffle your deck. This is mediocre to say the least, just because on the first turn, when you go first, you cannot use it. You're better off going second and uh, using Sobble's attack. If you go second, don't waste your supporter, use Sobble's attack. You ensure they slap the, you slap some stuff on the bench and you can use another supporter to just dig even deeper for more resources. Don't know how to feel about this one. Don't think it's gonna be seeing any play, although if the first turn supporter rule changes once again, this might be seeing play, but I don't know if Pokemon's gonna do that in the Sword and Shield era. And then last but not least is the Dyna Tree Hill. Pokemon and, uh, and play can be healed, both yours and your opponents. They can still be uh, recovered with special conditions, but they cannot be uh, their HP cannot be healed. So that means 
No Mellow Lana action, no, um, for instance, Great Potion, if that's still being played. No uh, Cheryl, so uh, this blocks it off, but it can be overlapped with other stadiums. And then we're gonna go to the second part, uh, and that's gonna be the surprise, the Silver Lance and Jet Black Spirit revealed. So uh, these are, of course, the, the legendaries we're talking about. Sometimes they, uh, and this is gonna be having V Union, I think it, they're gonna have included in here. And uh, these are also gonna be in chilling range. So we have Zero Aura back in the format. Look at the artwork, fantastic, lightning power. And uh, this Zero Aura V uh, slaps 100 damage. And if any of your other Rapid Strike Pokemon used an attack during your last turn, doesn't matter which one, if you use a Rapid Strike attack, or an attacker in your Rapid Strike deck, it doesn't matter. You can actually slap 160 damage to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. Pair that with your Passimian, that's 190. Sniping Crobat, Eldegos, it's gonna be lit. Oh boy, I'm uh, hyping stuff up way too much, I think. <laughs> this is good. Uh, the, the problem with this kind of an approach is that Rapid Strike Energy uh, provides two energies, but the problem with this is that you need another attachment. You can use Tapu Koko Prism Star, though. Don't forget about that. We also have Tornadus. Reminds me back of the days. Uh, Tornadus EX. Uh, I don't know. I think it was in uh, Darkness Explorers or something. 20 damage if there's a stadium card in play, 20 more damage, so that's 40, it's a single strike Pokemon, so add the single strike energy, that's 60 damage for one energy, uh, yeah, we'll see what, what that brings us, it's also a Carlos energy, uh, Carlos type, so he cannot hit for weakness, which is an, an, an unfortunate, and then we have this guy, the Tornadus V Max, 60 damage again, and uh, if there's a stadium card in play with a second attack, 240 freaking damage, so uh, the damage output is not too bad, and uh, with single strike energies, you can add it to a whole different level. With Karen's Conviction, you can even go for one hit KO. So uh, very splashable. You can welder single strike uh, Hondooms as well. So we'll see how uh, what this guy brings. Then cast form. I do love this mechanic. There's a couple of cast form revealed, and uh, you can use their attacks for zero energies if you have uh, eight or more tool uh, stadium cards in your discard pile. Yeah. So it's very similar like the Rodom engine. So you need eight stadiums. Who, which deck plays eight stadiums in the first place? So uh, which stadiums would you be playing? It's a nice way if you're playing Codex Well and then the following turn you slap another stadium down. Uh, I don't know, no, no, not Codex Well. You can just play eight stadiums. It's gonna be rough to get them in there, but then you have yourself an army of uh, cast forms. They all have free retreat, which is always a nice bonus. This slaps to 120 and uh, that's a, a flat 120. That this guy is able to slap 20 to each of your opponent's Pokemon, so it's like Tapu Koko flying flip. This is guy at 150, and you have to discard a stadium card in play in order to use it. And this guy slaps 80, and you can draw cards until you have six cards in hand. And that's about it. There's also new uh, merchandise shenanigans revealed. Look at this fantastic deck box. I, I know you guys want some sleeves of that. You know, Japanese people having those fancy sleeves. Even this one, look at that. Blaziken V Max. Okay, that's it for this uh, long video of the Chilling Rain uh, sneak peek review. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy the content, be sure to mash that like button as always. Be sure to thank our sponsors and use my coupon code ZAPDOSTCG on PokeTownStore.com for all the TCG online needs you want. They are gonna have, they already have battle styles up. Uh, I think they already have battle styles up. If not, they're gonna be uh, releasing it uh, any single day now. So be sure to refresh the website. You're gonna be helping me on, uh, out a ton if you're using my coupon code and you're getting yourself 5% discount. How fantastic is that? Also go check out cardmarket.com, the best place if you are a European player to buy and sell cards to people all across Europe. I personally use it every day and it's nice to get those uh, cards you need for your new deck. Anyhow, have yourself a fantastic rest of your day. I'll see you guys tomorrow with more Pokemon TCG epicness. I'm out. Peace.